you sit in a forest and become meditative, cobras will gather in front of you. Consuming venom has done miracles to me in terms of rejuvenating my body and doing things with myself. There are certain type of yogis who always carry these mountain scorpions. They will take a sting from the scorpion. They are using the venom to just uh, shake up the whole neurological system. Where there is access to consciousness, they are able to sense that. So, you mentioned this instrument that permits us to access this, uh, whatever we call it, consciousness, intelligence, uh, but you say it's, it's for humans. So, what do you think about animals and how they perceive the world? See, uh, when it comes to animals, an animal is programmed in such a way that largely its life is uh, fixed around its survival process. Let's say, uh, for any creature for that matter, their stomach is full, their life is settled, they just sit there happily. But that's not the nature of the human being. Stomach is empty, only one problem, stomach is full, one hundred problems. This is the nature of the human being. Because survival is not the end game for us. Only when survival is taken care of, what is human kicks in, till then we are also just one more creature. When uh, we are absolutely hungry and uh, survival is in question, we are like any other creature. Human beings fight like any other creatures when survival is in question. Only when those things are taken care of, other dimensions of being human become a possibility. So survival is not the end game for us, it is the beginning for us. It is the A of life, but for all other creatures, survival is the end game for us. But even among them, certain creatures, are far more capable of accessing or at least being sensitive. I wouldn't say accessing, they're little more sensitive to consciousness. Wherever there is consciousness, certain creatures behave in a certain way. In India, in the yogic culture, in the Indian mysticism, everywhere you see there will be a cobra, always. Simply because we've always seen wherever there is a little bit of you know, access to consciousness, these creatures somehow sense it and they arrive. What makes them uh, sense it? One thing I'm guessing, this is not a certain science for me, I'm just guessing because they are stone deaf. I think they are super alert and some other… Uh, in some other sense, they are very, very alert. This is a fact, this has been uh, checked by a few people. See, for example, a cobra in southern India, it has no ears at all, no hearing mechanism, so it has got the whole body to the ground and literally ear to the ground, you know <laughs> So, if there is going to be an earthquake in California, which is literally twelve hours away, that means almost on the opposite side of the planet, if there is going to be an earthquake in the next two days or three days, this cobra will start behaving in a certain way. If you observe it carefully, if you have mastered that observation sufficiently, you can clearly tell that there is going to be uh, an earthquake in s approximately this kind of latitude. There are people who can do that. By simply observing the serpent, how it behaves, they say, there is going to be this kind of movement in some part of the planet. So, because any littlest… In even the minutest vibrations in the planet, it is able to sense. So, because of this, it has a certain uh, awareness or rather sensitivity to certain vibrations. Probably, when somebody accesses what we are referring to as consciousness, the other vibrations which are normally everybody's uh, throwing out on a day-to-day -day basis, their physical stuff, their psychological stuff, probably that becomes minimal. Lack of that reverberation is something that a cobra senses. If you become meri very meditative, you sit in a forest and become meditative, cobras will gather in front of you. They will come and sit there as if they're waiting for you. This is my personal experience any number of times and this is… this will be vouched for by any number of yogis in the tradition always because they're able to sense that lack of vibration in the person. When the vibrations become very minimal or very fine, somehow they are drawn to that. All venomous creatures, those which create venom in their system, 
all of them are con are able to sense this. Probably, uh, I'm I'm just doing guesswork here. It's just uh, guesswork. See, some creature generates venom within itself as an evolutionary process, probably because in some way his uh, physical features and things are such that without a deadly venom, he wouldn't have survived. He is constantly threatened. So, because he's feeling so threatened, you, it's also true in human beings, those who are feeling always threatened, they will carry a lot of venom within themselves. So, looking at human behavior, I'm just guessing, maybe in the evolutionary process, because they don't have limbs, let us say the snakes don't have limbs, they don't have the same capabilities that other creatures have, so they might have developed venom over a period of time, because otherwise they wouldn't have survived, otherwise they wouldn't have got food to eat, everything around them moves faster. But still they manage to hunt and live only because of the venom that they carry. All venomous creatures, I've noticed this with bees, you know, the honey bees, the way they behave around me, many, many times I've noticed is very strange. In the beginning when it happened, I couldn't believe how these insects seem to be sensing something which nobody else, you know, human beings don't know most of the time, but they're able to see it. I've generally noticed this with all venomous creatures because to generate that venom, there is some special process going on within them. From what I hear from other scientists and, uh, you know, people who are working in the field, they are saying venom is uh, uh, one of the most complex uh, proteins that are produced on the planet. And today, for various neurological ailments, the experiments are going on how venom could be a solution in the future. Because, you know, in my personal experience, consuming venom has done miracles to me in terms of rejuvenating my body and doing things with myself in so many different ways. There are certain type of yogis who always carry these mountain scorpions, which are almost like nine inches long, uh, in a box. Once in a way, they will decide when they will take a sting from the scorpion, your whole neurological system will jangle. It will go for twenty-four hours to forty-eight hours. It won't let you sleep, it will just keep you up. And between pain and pleasure, there is very little distinction. Once the neurological system gets tangled, you know, like jangled in a certain way, you can make it into pain, you can make it into pleasure consciously. So they will cry, they will laugh, they will cry, they will laugh, they will go through this for whole twenty-four to forty-eight hours because they are using the venom to just uh, shake up the whole neurological system. So, having said that, somewhere certain creatures have little more access to these things. They may not have access to consciousness, but where there is access to consciousness, they're able to sense that. In my understanding or I would rather say my presumption is that, that they're able to uh, mark out those creatures or those bodies who are uh, least amount of reverberations in them. Where there is least amount of reverberation is like a little bit of a vacuum for them, so they are drawn towards that and at the same time they will not harm that, uh, you know, that kind of reverberation because they feel very passive. There is a video where I am holding a king cobra, not by the head but in the body, it is not a pet cobra or something. We've just caught it three… two, three days before that is being uh, filmed there. And king cobra, if it bites you, you have six to eight minutes to live, that's it. It has enough venom to kill an elephant, but it will not bite. If you show a little anxiety, it will bite you. If you are just absolutely calm, it will not touch you because it's going by the reverb that you generate.